Okay, hello and welcome to this being a history, politics, philosophy and ethics student webinar. Quite a long title, but um, covering kind of the humanities subjects in, in a broad in a broad area. So we are lucky enough today to be joined by Jamie and by Rosie, and I'll get them to introduce themselves in a second. But we will take you through some of the things that um, people will have to think about, some of the areas that people will think about in their journey towards starting university um, with a focus on Chichester and all the things that we do um, here um, in those first few weeks and obviously some of the feelings that you might have about starting university. So first, if I come to you, Jamie, do you want to quickly introduce yourself and what course you're on? Hi, so yeah, my name's Jamie. Um, my pronouns are they, them. I'm second year studying theology. Um, and I'm here today representing philosophy and ethics. And over to Rosie to introduce herself as well. Hi, I'm Rosie. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a third year BA Ons history student. Excellent. Thank you both. So, as I said, we're going to go through some different slides today just to talk about some of the things around leading towards university, hopefully to quell some of those fears and alleviate some of those worries that you might have, but also to kind of show that actually some of those worries are normal. Everyone else will have them and sometimes you'll get there, you'll get to university and you'll realise, oh, actually, OK, everyone else is thinking the same thing as me and hopefully you'll go away feeling a little bit more comfortable, albeit there is some scared, scared feelings and excited feelings, but it is about um, realising that you're not the only one with those feelings. So first things first, going back for you guys, probably pre pre university, but it's those first stages of researching university. So if I come to you first, Rosie, what steps did you take before joining university? Um, so. First of all, I decided I was going to take a gap year because I felt more comfortable applying when I knew what my results were so I could work from there. Um, I created a very big list and then I got up like a map of Britain. So I decided I wanted to go to university in Britain and I worked out all the distances from my hometown and how far it would take to go there and back. Excellent. That's quite quite a, quite a methodical way to do it. That's good. Um, and how about you, Jamie? What, what did what did what were your first thoughts um, on your steps to joining university? So I um, was very different, actually, and I do I do tend to like a plan, but I can also be quite <laughs> spontaneous. So I was working full time, and I only really had the idea to try again at uni um, about a week before uni started. Um, so I live in Haven with my family um, and I've stayed there and commuted. So I basically in an evening kind of looked at um, the unis in the area um, and found that Chichester had a philosophy department and was doing exactly what I wanted. And then I applied the next day. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, a week later I was kind of there. Excellent, thank you. So I'll stick with you, Jamie. How, how, what were your thoughts and feelings around going to university first? Kind of first thoughts and feelings. Um, I was excited. I was really excited to kind finally kind of bite the bullet and do it because um, I originally went straight from college when I was 18 um, and did a year and then dropped out. And I always said to myself, I'm never going back to uni. And I just got to the point where I think it was like the right time in my life to to try again. Um, so I was I applied and then I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm actually doing this. So I was I was nervous. I was very nervous, especially being a little not massively older, but a little bit older thinking, am I going to make friends? Do I know what I'm doing? Um, so, yeah, nervous, but also excited about kind of trying again and doing something new. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that. And um, Rosie, how about you? What were what were potentially some of the feelings you had about going to university in those first first few weeks? I was quite excited because it was my first time away um, living from home and it was um, yeah, just really excited, but also slightly nervous, mainly about leaving my dog. Um, <laughs> but uh, lots of photos and video calls with him helped with that. Um, but yeah, it was just a really exciting opportunity to learn more about things that I was interested in and further my knowledge and that sort of thing. Excellent. I can appreciate being away from your dog. I think I think probably lots of people are, would, would appreciate that as well. Um, so Rosie, sticking with you, is there one top tip you would give on when deciding about which university you might want to go to? 
I think the setting's really important. So getting to know whichever city or town your university is based in like is it based on the edge of town is it in the center of town and just getting a feeling for the area because you're also going to be living in that place as well as studying in it so it's really important that you get a nice vibe from the area excellent thank you uh, and jamie how about you would there be any top tips you might have from a different perspective so I, I completely agree um, with what Rosie said. Um, I also think <coughs> it's good to visit and even if you can't visit to talk to the, the lecturers or people already involved um, to get a feel of like the course, because obviously you want it to be something that you're interested in, something you want to kind of pursue for the three years. I think that's really important. Um, but also on the other hand, I would say don't pick somewhere just because they have a single course that you really want to do because courses can change. So it's good to look at the specifics um, of the course, but also like the overall feel, because overall, if it's lots of different things you want to do, then I think that's that's a really good kind of gist of whether it would be a good fit for you. Excellent. Thank you. So, yeah, kind of echoing some of those top tips, some of the other things I know that we get fed back to us uh, is kind of that um top tips around visiting universities as we said um now you will have opportunities to be attending applicant days our applicant days are currently running at the moment and uh, if you're one of our offer holders you will be receiving emails about those um we still run campus tours there are online um kind of taste of lectures and webinars you can watch to really get a feel for a campus to really get a feel for the lecturers to make sure it's the sort of place you can see yourself spending three years which is a long, long amount of time and also investing quite quite a large sum of money in as well. Something else um, for those of you who might be commuting, test run your journey from university to home. Sounds like a bizarre one, maybe a little bit of a boring one, but it will make all the difference when you're uh, rushing in for lectures, when you're coming in at peak times, it really will help you really alleviate some of those kind of worries or stresses of sitting in traffic and bits and pieces. Quite importantly, um, and as Rosie has said, it's about visiting the local area, knowing what else is around. It's a, you're going to be living in potentially a new city, somewhere that's new to you. Also, one of the most important ones at the bottom there is ask questions. Don't ever be afraid to ask lots of questions. You, whatever you're thinking, lots of other people will be thinking it too. Um, and we can you can do that to us in a, in a multitude of different ways on social media or on email. Um, and we also have something I'll talk about near the end called Campus Connect, which is quite uh, which is quite new to us, but also another way to ask lots of questions. So getting started, so those first weeks or two at university, um, Jamie, I'll come to you first, but what, what was your first week like at university? Um, I was very, I was nervous. I was nervous um, just to, and I, I am notoriously bad at direction <laughs> and finding things. Um, so it was challenging for me personally, um, but, the all the kind of um the welcome staff was amazing I really enjoyed going to Freshers Fair and talking to loads of different people um and all the kind of introductory lectures where you're um meeting the people on your course and you're being told things everything was so informative uh form informative that's the word um like so much information helpful information um and it helped I think it really helped me to kind of settle in more to kind of know what was going on know that there was that supportive environment as well so it was it was really fun actually excellent and Rosie second question for you so how did you find settling into student life I really enjoyed it I think because um I was a member of history society quite early on it was a way that I could interact with people because it was a little bit hard when I first started because it was COVID times. So I only mean, had social distance and masks and stuff, which made it a bit harder to communicate. But being able to be on a Zoom call with the History Society and talk to people that way and through um, the social media like group chats for the course, that was really nice. Excellent, thank you. That's cool. And I know this is always a really this question changes term on term, but what does a typical week look like for you? Maybe go if you can remember to your first year what a typical week was in your first semester. Rosie, I'll come to you first. 
Yep, so for first year, um, the lessons were about two hours long each, which was lecture and seminar. Um, and there were four modules per semester, so you'd have eight hours of lessons on site per week, um, as well as doing extra reading and homework around that, and sometimes presentations as well, depending if it was an assessment time or not. Excellent, thank you. And Jamie, how about you? Can you remember the sorts of things you did in your, your first year or time table you had in your first year, sorry? Um, I don't I don't remember massive specifics, but um, it was very much um, the same. So it was four modules, um, two hours each. Um, so you'd, get, you'd do the two hours all in one go, but you'd get a break of about 10, 15 minutes in the middle. Um, and a lot of them try and do it kind of lecture for an hour and then seminar and discuss, um, which is really helpful. Um, I think for my first term, I had... Um, I didn't have more than one lecture in a day, so all of my lectures were spread across four days, um, which was nice because I was in uni. I was able to then go to the library and do the readings for the next um, the next lectures or catch up on my notes um, and stuff like that. And it's quite similar. It's similar now um, in second term of second year. Um, it's four modules, two hours of lectures per module. Um, so it doesn't kind of get more intense in terms of actual lecture time the further you go which is quite nice because there's never any more stress than what you start with in first year in terms of lesson and times and everything. Excellent and Jamie do you have time for a job alongside your study? So I um that's an interesting question um I don't work um permanent jobs um but that's because I have chronic pain and fatigue um but I do have the time is there yes it's very I've got lots of friends that work full-time uh not full-time like permanent part-time yeah um and I um am doing work as a student ambassador um which is kind of as and when I've actually got an interview later today to do uh, pharmacy work because I'm a, pharm a qualified pharmacy dispenser and Excellent. do bank work for that. So, yeah, lots of um, lots of time to organise kind of around different things to be able to work and also do the stuff you enjoy. Um, and this term I've got I'm doing three modules. Uh, well, technically four modules, but three teaching and I'm doing a placement, a work placement one day a week as well. So I kind of I might have like three jobs but all kind of very different as and when type stuff. So yeah, there's definitely time. Excellent. And Rosie, what would you say? Do you, do you have a job alongside your study? I did to begin with, because it was the job that I had before I started uni, because I'm from Horsham, so it's not a million miles away from Chichester. So I went back every weekend to do my Saturday job at the local library. Uh, but now it's dissertation season. I decided that the commute was taking too much out of my week to be worth the benefit in terms of looking after my dissertation and you know that final stretch <laughs> of uni so I, I've uh, stopped doing that now just after Christmas so yeah but apart from that it was fine before that point it's just when the work ramps up it's better to have a job that's closer to home that's brilliant as in uni. Yeah. yeah great advice that's yeah very true and like um, like you said, there are jobs on campus, there are ambassador roles, there's student union roles and bits and pieces, which is really cool. So moving on then to something that we we get a lot of and we survey students as they're coming through and they're, they're applying. So things like uh, things about biggest concerns before coming to university. So you can see a few on the kind of few on the slide there around living in halls, making new friends, workloads, those sorts of things. Um, Rosie, what was your biggest concern, would you say, before you came to university? Was there something you, you had in the forefront of your mind? I think at the time, because it was September 2020, the biggest concern for me was catching COVID because I'm clinically vulnerable. Um, but the uni really put my mind at ease with that because they had so many different measures in place, like the one-way systems and the regular like hand sanitisation points and mask wearing in classrooms and like the socially distanced chair layout in classrooms so I did feel safe when I arrived. Oh excellent that's nice to hear um, and Jamie how about you was there anything you had as your immediate kind of concerns when you were starting? 
I think because going to uni the first time was such like a knock in confidence, I was really worried that I just wasn't going to be good enough. <laughs> but that, like, like I said previously, like the the teaching staff and everybody are so supportive um, that it's it's really helped like boost my confidence. Um, and that was like the confidence issue was like making friends as well and going out and doing things I was always kind of worried um but yeah that has been massively alleviated just by how great everybody is here oh excellent that's really nice to hear that's good thanks guys so um I know obviously already Jamie said about commuting so we're probably focused on Rosie for some of these questions but um, obviously for a lot of people it's about moving away from home sometimes a little bit further than others but um, Rosie how did you feel about moving away from home um, and, and kind of what was student accommodation like? When I was in halls I did really enjoy it I had some lovely flatmates and even when I had to go home uh, we stayed in touch and watched Bake Off together over WhatsApp video calls and it was just good fun. Oh, brilliant. That's cool. Something that, that kind of links into this. Do do either of you belong to any societies or clubs? I'll come to you first, Jamie. Um, yeah, so I, um, for a lot of first year um, and some of this year, I was part of Handball, um, which I really enjoyed as a sport and as a society, everybody is really, really lovely and supportive. Um, I've had to, um, like I said, with my chronic pain, um, I had to kind of stop that a bit, which is disappointing because I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm also part of the LGBT society, um, which is a really nice community as well. Excellent. And Rosie, how about you? Are you in part of any societies or clubs? Um, well, I used to be part of environmental society, but I had to stop that because I felt trying to do two societies at once whilst doing the dissertation wasn't um, going to be an easy thing to do. But I am the president of history society and I've been going to that since first year. So I've really enjoyed that. Oh, excellent. That's really cool. So for, for those who might be listening into this, the clubs and societies, uh, we use the term quite uh, quite quickly and forget sometimes it's not always known what they are but clubs and societies effectively are groups of like-minded people who might have similar interests they can be sports they can be uh, lgbt society it could be history society they could be related to your subject or they could just be for total fun and i know in the past we've had things like uh, there was a harry potter society in the past all sorts of different things so if people have like-minded interests then these societies can carry on for years and sometimes they start one year then they finish and then the different society comes up so it's about getting students together and getting students socialising so it's yeah quite a, quite a nice part of university life alongside the academic study. So moving on to something else that we know people um, do start to worry about um, um, and do think oh am I going to cope with this am I going to cope with that but um, things like exams essays types of assessment and bits and pieces if I come to you first Jamie what types of assessment do you have in your subject area? I would say um, kind of 90% are um, essays, um, kind of bigger essays and smaller essays. So um, sometimes a module will be split kind of 50-50 um, and then sometimes it's kind of 30% for like a thousand words and 70% for something closer to like 2000, 2500, something like that. Um, but a couple of times we've had presentations um, and some of those are formative, so they're not counted um, towards the grade, um, but sometimes um, they are, and again, a kind of smaller percentage. Um, in first year, we do, um, I think everybody, so philosophy and ethics will do a law module, and that um, law module is um, an exam and an essay. Um, but for my knowledge and everything that I've chosen, it's just that one exam and there aren't any more exams over the three years. Um, so, yeah, mostly, mostly essays, a couple of presentations and one exam. Excellent. So, yeah, it's that word, isn't it? Exam and people go, <gasps> but at university quite often there are um limited number of exams unless you, particular, you choose particular pathways. So, yeah. And Rosie, how about you? Have, have you got a similar experience of assessment? Yeah, so in first year um, we had some presentations, some source analysis, but mainly 
smaller essays just to get us used to how to write an essay and what a university essay looked like compared to a college essay. Um, and then in second year, it was more essay based. And then third year, it's, for me personally, it's just been pure longer essays. So they've been about 3,500 words. And then the dissertation is 10,000 words and it's split into two to three chapters. OK, brilliant. That's cool. That gives us some information on how you prepared as well, which is quite nice. Um, coming back to you, Jamie, is there any particular things you do to prepare for these assessments? Is there any way you get in the zone? I think uh, for me personally, because I'm I am massive on on kind of planning, but especially with um, the kind of chronic pain. And I also have ADHD, so I need to plan to make sure that I do the work and get it in on time. Um, and I think the great thing um, about uni here is that they, um, again, they're so supportive and with the deadlines, um, they try and spread them out um, and you know what the deadlines are very early. So you can, you do have that time. So I think for me to get in the zone, it's just to give myself time, to yeah. give myself time, like to not stress about, when I need to rest, but also plan the time that I have so I can rest and read and write um, and kind of section it out like that. So I'm not getting, because I would often before get very overwhelmed and struggle with it. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of giving yourself that preparation time, I think is the most important thing for me. Excellent, thank you. That leads us nicely on to the kind of supports on offer. I know numerous points of this, this kind of webinar, we've we've talked about the supports on offer. So um, at the University of Chichester, we are very lucky to have a, a, a large support department and it covers a whole multitude of different kind of angles of, of, of academic study, of well-being, um, and, it, and it is there for students to access. Uh, very importantly, we, we, we want students to be accessing these things. It could be that you want help on how to structure an essay. It could be that you want help on how to uh, write a bibliography, how to reference all those sorts of things. So the obvious things that come alongside your academic study. And then you've got the other things that come alongside um, for, for mental health, well-being, uh, there's student money support, if you want to help with budgeting, maybe what other pots of money that you could apply to, then there are also points of contact for that. And then you've got the other end of the spectrum where there are um, kind of things that you could be more signposted to or signpost yourself to is things like some of the mental health and uh, kind of you talk counselling as well. So there's that whole multitude of different support and offer, um, which is really important to student success and also students being able to, to kind of fully engage in their academic study. So Coming along to the next bit, not to put you guys on the spot, I'm sure you've had a bit of a think about this one, but what might you say to someone who's considering kind of studying one of the humanities subjects that we're talking about today? I'm going to come to Rosie first. So I would check out what the library has on offer because with humanities, you're going to be spending a lot of time doing essay work. So look at the library, there's at the sort of books and the sort of modules that you'd be interested in in studying and check what e resources they have as well because our uni certainly has access to a wide variety of e resources you've got jstor where you've got a whole catalogue of different journal articles you've got lots of different ebooks as well so you can study remotely or in a more accessible format if you want so that would be my number one thing excellent thank you and jamie how about you what might you say to someone who's considering studying the humanity subjects i would say do it um, I think in, it's an incredible opportunity um, to really expand your knowledge in whatever direction you want to. Um, I think even though the humanities um, kind of uh, little subsections of the department um, are very small, um, it means that everybody, especially at Chichester, is kind of they really care about you individually um, and even though it is small we have a huge kind of range of um, expertise and knowledge um, and it's really valued as a subject and I think sometimes humanities aren't as valued as, as other ones um, so yeah I think um, also I would say you're good enough to do it um, it's a great opportunity to learn something new um, 
and yeah you should definitely do it thank you that's really cool thank you guys that's that's been excellent so leads us nicely on to kind of the point where we say any questions and i know you can't physically ask them at this present moment in the in a recording but you can email us on uh study here at chai.ac.uk you can also go on our social media channels um, and ask questions via that option and there are lots of contact details on our website as well so if you do want to contact key departments um, admissions teams bits and pieces like that then you can find contact details for those on the website Something that you will find if you are an offer holder with us here at Chichester, we will be sending out information on an app called Campus Connect um, and this app will um, give you a chance to join different groups um, and different subsections of these groups so that you can start to meet those people who might be on your course, they might have similar interests to you and ultimately coming up towards the summer might be living in similar blocks on campus or halls and bits and pieces as you as well. So it's a chance for you to start to make some of those relationships and form some of those links with people um, that you you will be studying alongside and also living alongside so it's quite an exciting time that brings us nicely to the end of the webinar but i want to say a massive thank you to our two guests today so rosie and jamie and say thank you for sharing your experiences and being really honest about them and we really hope that that helps to make uh, make some of the decisions and also alleviate some of those fears that might be out there for some of you applicants who are looking at us for september so thank you very much